Hey, did you know that 75% of all small businesses in the U.S. operate without a budget? Yes, that is true. But no wonder that only 50% of all small businesses make it past their fifth year. And the culprit? Having an operating budget. Having an operating budget for your business like the big companies do, it's critical to the success of your business. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to prepare an operating budget for your business in 20 minutes or less. Yes! Hey everybody, welcome to 7 Figures and Beyond. I am your host, Leo Landaverde. I am an author, business coach, and CFO, and I'm on a mission to help small business owners quickly and efficiently scale their businesses to seven figures and beyond while maximizing profit and dramatically increasing the value of their businesses. Let's do this. If you're ready to scale your business to seven figures and beyond while creating the financial freedom and the lifestyle you want, then subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit the bell so you're notified every time a new video comes out. Thank you so much. Hey everybody, um, in today's video, I'll be showing you how to prepare an operating budget for your business. And we're gonna to try to do it in 20 minutes or less. So let's do this. Um, this is part of a workbook in Excel that I'm actually running on Excel online. So um, typically in my line of work, there's, a, there's an interaction between uh, the owners and the management team and my team. And it, this becomes a team effort to create a budget which is, I cannot stress enough how important it is to, to be able for you to look into the future of your business. You gotta, you gotta have a plan and you gotta have a vision and that vision needs to be translated into numbers uh, in our world as a CFO, that is a budget. We're gonna uh, live by the budget. Uh, of course, we're gonna try to do better in the revenue side than, than, than expected. And, and we're gonna try to be lower on the expense side than expected. So we want more profit. <clears throat> so it has, this uh, tool has multiple, um, it's a pretty robust tool that I use and it has multiple sheets. Um, we're not going to go over them today. <clears throat> really, the, the video today is about the operating budget as it pertains to uh, the profit and loss or the income statement. Uh, and in other videos, I'll be diving deeper into the balance sheet and the, and, and the, uh, and the cash flow statement, but it has multiple parts. So uh, let me take you, kind of give you a quick tour of it. Um, an internal rate of return. So this is a uh, Occasionally, businesses will come to me because they want to look for an outside investor to to inject any uh, amount of money into the business. And what would the internal rate of return would be? This is not. This assumes zero. There's no investors for the sake of this budget. Um, uh, <clears throat> so this is that sheet that we're not going to be really using today. The summary: <clears throat> everything that you see in this color right here are input sections. So if and when you download the template, which I really suggest you do, I spend a lot of time uh, over really many years really fine tuning and honing a lot of the tools that I use uh, to run accounting departments for uh, uh, lower middle market companies <clears throat> and even startups. These are tools that you can use. I'm be happy to give it away for free to use. So just, you can just sort of have to follow the directions at the end of this video. Uh, but the input sections are colored. Uh, so you really don't want to uh, uh, play too much outside of that. Uh, with raw materials, uh, for the sake of this uh, budget, we're gonna have raw materials. We're gonna have a seven product, product line, and each product line will have a cost right here. And this is our cost of goods. Uh, so you got your revenue piece, you got your cost of good piece, that is gonna give us a gross profit percentage. In this uh, scenario, we have a 75% gross profit. It's a pretty, you know, pretty generous gross profit. I don't know about your industry specific. Uh, there are, you know, different industry verticals will have different um, types of gross profits. Uh, if you're in manufacturing, you're, you're probably going to be, you know, you want to be between 30 and 35. If you're in construction, you're probably going to be between 15 and 20%. So it really depends on your industry. The next section is your uh, operating expenses. These are not variable expenses for the most part. These are fixed expenses. While this 
expenses right here are variable, which means they go up with revenue and come down with revenue. The ones down here are more what we call OPEX, operating expenses. And uh, <clears throat> to do a budget right, you got to start with the prior year. So we are in 2020. We're going to be looking at the variance uh, in 2019 as we prepare for the year. We don't want to be too far off. We're going to make some assumptions as to um, we you know what areas we're increasing, which areas we're decreasing on the expense line. And we enter the numbers here um, that get populated um, in the next sheet. So there are no capital expenditures that we're going to do for, for this exercise. Um, and now let me take you to the income statement. <clears throat> so the income statement is really it feeds off the summary sheet and the income symbol we begin with the revenue and you're going to notice that we have the seven product lines uh, related sales and the seven product lines related cost of goods uh, which is going to give us a gross profit of 75 percent which matches to the one prior and this is really built on you notice that there's no color here uh, th there's not to be entered there's no information to be entered it just starts to process and create an income statement um, and uh, what it tells us here that our operating expense of 824,489 and 88 cents equals to 59.5% of the revenue that is generated uh, for this calendar year. Um, this is our EBITDA, which is our earnings, earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization, which is 15.5%, pretty robust. Depreciation and amortization as a separate line. Uh, because earnings before, so then we add them back, uh, earnings before interest and tax. Let me check. Uh, there's really no interest expense to speak of the, 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 for this, 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 this company. There are no loans. There, we're not paying any principal. They, hence, we're not, you know, we're not paying any interest. So that's not an expense line. Okay, so uh, now there is the balance sheet. Uh, the balance sheet is, pro all of these formulas are, all of the sheets kind of talk to each other. They have formulas embedded. Um, we know the, the, it borrows, it takes information from the other sheets. Now the balance sheet, it, it needs to be built up, but it already takes some information on the cash and cash equivalents uh, from other sheets. And the cash flow statement begins with the EBITDA. And here's an interesting thing about the cash flow statement. The cash flow statement is the is the is the the, the stop gap between the balance sheet and the income statement. The cash flow statement begins where the income statement ends. Uh, these are our payroll inputs. I have some scenarios here. These are these are uh, fictitious. They don't exist. Uh, but I wanted to show you for illustrative purposes. Uh, and this is the loan amortization. Uh, pretty cool tool because it tells you if you were to get a loan, what it would do. Uh, through you know the, the length of the loan, how many months? It could be a 60-month loan, it could be a 72-month loan, and then it, it'll populate the other areas. So let's go back to the summary. So when I am building budgets, the first thing I ask is, and you know, I look back into how did we do last year, and what are the assumptions, and what are we projecting from the sales team, from the CEO. Uh, the VP of sales and and how are we going to do in each line? So I assume that I got all the data and I crunched it, and um, we're going to move a hundred uh, units of product one. Notice that the selling price for this product is ten thousand. So um, and our raw materials or the cost to generate to prepare or to sell this. This product one is 2,500 for every 10,000 units. So 2,500 of the 10,000 really is our cost to generate that product. So it gives us a contribution per unit or a gross profit of $7,500 uh, per unit sold. And to keep it simple, it's 75% across the line. Now, and you may have, pro if you're a product-based business, you may have different gross profits for different products. You know, you may have a wholesale division and you may have a retail division. So your wholesale division, the gross profit, would be uh, lower than the retail. Uh, product one, we have 100 units. Product two, we have 100 units. Um, so then you can figure, you know, what, what, what would that be per month? Well, uh, just to keep it simple, if you take 100 divided into 12, I'm assuming that we're going to move, you know, somewhere between eight and nine units per month. 
of this product that caught, that we can sell for a thousand. What this this is, it kind of helps me kind of because I'm not able to see the income statement right now. What it allows me to do is how are we doing with the revenue without having to go back and forth here? Because this is where it kind of crunches the numbers. It gives us the output. This is a summary. So what I do is I kind of look at it uh, from left to right and see where I'm doing. Now, say if I was to sell lesser units and we do 80 units, notice that our, our, our revenue for product one would go from a million to 800,000. Uh, but we're going to go back to the 100 units and then we have $1 million for product one, uh, 100 for product two, 75, 50, 25, 10, and 125 for product seven. Um, <clears throat> so it is important uh, you as a business owner, your business begins a gross profit. I, every time I speak, I say this and, and I need it to make sure it resonates with you. When you're building a budget, gross profit is everything. So if you have a $5 million business, it, but, but your gross profit is 20%, so really you have a million dollars worth of gross profit and then you take you know your expenses and that's your net profit i cannot stress how important it is to understand you need to know your numbers you need to know your metrics you need to know your gross profit because the gross profit is what you live off okay so with that said we have gross profit i mean i'm sorry cost of goods this is a cost of doing business is 346,000, which is added up here, which is the sum of all the costs of all the products for this year. Uh, if you take our sales of 1.38, you know, 1,385,000 minus 346,000 dollars worth of costs to incur in those sales, we have 1,038,750 in gross profit. Now we really begin to build up our expense line. And this is, you know, this is, it, it's, it's pretty standard. You know, th there's going to be some additions uh, in different, um, you know, industries. But, you know, for the most part, there's going to be automobile expense, bank service charges, charitable contributions, as a, you know, that is a, is a bona fide a tax, uh, you know, deductible expense for your business if you're actually given money from the business to a 501c3, a nonprofit. So you got your computer and internet expenses, you got your consulting, uh, you got your contract labor, your health benefits. For the sake of this, we have no zero for health benefits. This is a fairly new startup. Uh, we have insurance expense. Um, I'm always, you know, I always want to make sure that if, if business is adequately protected uh, in case something happens, it's much like you wouldn't drive a car without insurance first of all it would be illegal but then it would be very foolish not to have it uh, i recommend that business owners have very uh, souped up uh, non on auto policies if you have drivers in your business but uh, the expense is commensurate with the revenue so the higher the revenue the higher the insurance expense you got your internet expense interest expense your marketing dollars this is different from sales Marketing really is what creates the environment in which people want to buy. That's the branding. Meals and entertainment, miscellaneous, office supplies, payroll expense, postage and delivery, professional fees. Uh, the professional fees are going to be those, you know, the, the experts in their fields. Um, so you're going to have your, your accountants. You know, I am a CFO, so I will be a line item and an operating expense of an income statement. You got your attorneys, you got your legal fees that we're budgeting for, you got your rent expense, your repairs and maintenance, taxes and licenses, uh, telephone expense, travel, and etc. So now that we have that, <clears throat> this number did not come in a vacuum. This number comes from prior historical expense expenses incurred for automobile expense. So in the and for this fictitious company in 2019, we spent $20,000 worth of automobile expense. We think we're going to need to invest a little more. So we're budgeting for $25,000 for the year. And what this does, this Y cell, which is not an input cell, calculates what that would be per month. So at $25,000 a year, we're incurring at $2,083.33 uh, average expenditure per month which is 25% higher than it was last year. So we're budgeting an increase. We expect more driving. 
to happen more more gas um, <clears throat> side note there is two ways that you can go um, and deduct the automobile expense in your business according to IRS guidelines in the US it's either the federal rate which I believe you know it changes but I think you know from 53 to 58 cents per dollar which takes into account your amortization of the you know depreciation of the car <clears throat> or you can go actuals now if you have a very expensive car uh, in like a truck like a work truck and you know it, the repairs and maintenance um, and then the gas um, then you have a decision to make that's a, the, the conversation for another day but um, <clears throat> you've got to be wise and you got to have good people advising you and what is the best way to optimize the expenses of your business so you can get the best bank for your buck so 25,000 bank service charges you can't get away you know it's gonna be anywhere from 10 to 12 dollars a month is what I usually see so we just you know they just put it in here we spent 179 last year so um, so we're expecting a little less um, but it's a line item it's it's it's, it's marginal uh, say we're gonna donate some money you know to a cost throughout the year so it's gonna average $50 so we enter $600 and it's a 20% increase over the prior year and we go down the line you got your computer and internet expenses so you can see now that with 40 percent increase in internet expense from that we're projecting so we're probably going to have more hires more bandwidth we're uploading more things we need more power um, we're there's no change in your consulting <clears throat> we're really decreasing for the sake of this uh, exercise our contract labor um, in another video, I spent uh, quite a bit of time talking about the difference between independent contractors and uh, W-2 employees when I, when I talked about cash flow statement. The laws are changing, particularly in California, as far as what the, the new uh, definition uh, in the ABC test that puts makes somebody an independent contractor versus an employee. Um, it is a pretty robust definition. I wouldn't play with it. Get a labor lawyer to help you, to, if you're understanding. Um, Anyway, you got your insurance expense. Uh, in, it's a marginal increase. We spent thirty-six thousand last year. I expect there's going to be more sales, so we're going to pay pay more insurance. Twenty percent. Uh, there was a loan last year that we paid off, uh, so there is no interest expense this year. Marketing expense is a six point two percent increase year over year from prior year. Meals, and you get the picture, right? What's interesting to know is that your biggest expense. In your business will always be payroll will always be your wages and salaries so um, don't just hire people for the sake of hiring people hire people with a purpose when I did the, uh, the video for the top 10 KPIs to motivate employees I mean you, you really they can become your greatest asset or your worst liability so you gotta uh, be fair but you gotta be wise as you add employees Last year we spent three hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. This year we're projecting uh, a growth. Now, there is one other sheet that I want to discuss in this video that supports the summary sheet, and that is the payroll input. Given the fact that your payroll is your largest expense, you should go out. You should go into it with eyes wide open. For this video, we have nine employees with different wages. Um, let's just say this is a professional services. Uh, I'm sorry. This is a this is a high end uh, company that has the labor is you know it, it can be very expensive. So forty thousand and you're we're factoring twelve percent uh, of the wages are employer related payroll taxes, which is a pay, that's a business expense. But those are separate from the taxes that the employee pays. So it gives us when you calculate your budget, you got to look at the whole cost of payroll wages plus the payroll taxes, and that. For the nine employees, it's 439000 Now, this particular company pays commissions uh, to the degree of 5%. If you notice here, right here, 5% of the sales are paid out uh, to sales reps. These are also W2 sales reps that actually are on commission. We're expected to pay $69,250 this year which we are which we're going to be paying payroll taxes on because 77,000 so our total payroll for 2020 is 516 now there's a couple of more additions that we didn't have from the prior year but just to kind of 
see how this works say we were to delete this our payroll goes down um and and so uh, but this is for this scenario so the payroll goes down then the pay employee related taxes go down this line will go down as you noticed uh is 516,000 or nine employees but if we didn't have nine and we had seven our payroll is 434,000 for the sake of this example, we have nine of 516th. Notice this number. This number comes back here because it borrows from the other sheet. And now divided by 12 gives us $43,000 a month. Payroll is, so we're, so at the end of it, there are, there are fixed expenses. Last year was 672,000 and we are projecting $824,000 worth of expenses. with a 22.6% increase. Keep in mind, this is what we're budgeting. Is the budget fluid? Yes. Will it change throughout the year? Perhaps. Uh, most likely it does. This is a living document. You gotta be looking at it. And here's the important thing about an operating budget. An operating budget it is only helpful if it is, if you look at actuals versus budget. One of the exercises that I do every month with my clients is that either me or my staff will go over a budget variance. So this budget will get approved by the management, uploaded into the accounting software, whether that is QuickBooks, Xero, uh, NetSuite, et cetera, and uh, Call Construct, whatever industry you're in. And, a, and then you run a, what it's called a budget versus variance report. And that'll tell you what whether you up or down on all the different categories, which is a really cool thing to do. Uh, the goal is to be a little ahead of budget in the revenue and a little under the budget on the, on the expense side. So here's the cool part. So now that we have a budget and we're generating, you know, we're, you know, we're assuming that everybody is on board and we think we're going to generate 1.3, just shy of 1.4 million and we're going to have a million 38 profit. Um, we have $824,000 worth of expense of 59% of 59.5% of revenue that gives us 214,000 or 15.5%. So you're making 15.5 cents for every dollar that you sell. The cost of service in that revenue on the operating expense is 59%. And then if you take away the 25% that you're spending on cost of goods, it leaves you the 15.5. Uh, please feel free to comment below and let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to answer all the questions that you have regarding the budgeting process. Uh, and I'm giving away this uh, budget, uh, this template, because I think you can definitely benefit from it. I think it, it's a free tool. Use it. Uh, I spend a lot of time building it. Um, so that hope that helps. So um, I hope this exercise was helpful to you. Uh, again, we're not talking about the balance sheet. We're not talking about the cash flow statement. Uh, we did cover payroll. And just remember that the areas in color are the areas you can change everything in white everything in white um it's already it's based on a formula so you notice here uh c33 divided into 12 which is your input for 14,000, gives you the 1166 um so now you know how to prepare an operating budget and i think we did it in 20 minutes or less and the truth is that 75% of all business, small businesses in the U.S. operate without a budget. How do, they, how do they do that? Well, and as I said, no wonder how many businesses go out because for lack of planning. And without a vision for your business, your business will perish. Hey, please comment below and let me know what type of experience, if any, you have with creating operating budgets for your business. And what that experience and process has been for you. I would like to know. Please comment below and like the video. As my gift to you, I would like to give you this budget template we went over on this video today. It took me many hours to get it to the way it looks today. Click on the link below so you can get it. Also, if you want to join a community of like-minded, successful entrepreneurs just like you, then join our community on Facebook at the link below where I share tips, tactics, and strategies on how my clients are growing their businesses to seven figures and beyond.